Well, hello, Shoreline and friends of Shoreline. We're continuing through 10 of my favorite passages in the Bible and just letting the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. And today's uh, passage comes from the book of Esther. And it's an amazing story. What's fascinating about Esther, uh, among many things, is that it never mentions the name of God, Yahweh, by formal name. But when you read Esther, you see the sovereignty of God and the hand of God all over the story. God's not mentioned by name, but God is present. And I look at that as like our world. There's people that don't name the name of Jesus, but he's there. God's present, he's at work. In the story of Esther, uh, she's discovered that where she, the people that she lives among, she's there as kind of a prisoner of war as a, many of the Jewish people. And uh, they're discovering that there's now a plot at hand by a guy named Haman to destroy their people, to allow people to, to basically kill them and take everything they own. It's, it's a horrible, horrible thing. And she has an opportunity to go to the king who she is now married to and raise the concern. But in the ancient world with kings, you didn't come into their presence without being invited in. And if you walked into their presence and stepped in without being invited, they could literally say, take them away. And what that meant was take them away and execute them, even a wife. You didn't just come wandering into the king's presence uninvited. But if you came and the king raised the scepter, then you could come in and visit with the king. If the king didn't raise the scepter, it was a huge problem. So Esther gets this word from Mordecai, her uncle, to stand up for the people of God, to raise her concerns with the king. And I love how this unfolds. We find this in, in Esther chapter four, beginning in verse 12. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, to her uncle, he sent back this answer to Esther. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. He says, don't think just because you're in the palace that you're not going to come under this, this hideous plan that Haman had planned to destroy the, the Jewish people. He says, uh, if, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So Mordecai says to her, it may be that God has put you right where you are at this moment to do what no one else can do. So consider that. And I love the response. Verse 15 of Esther chapter 4. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. They're kind of communicating back and forth via letter. Go gather all the Jews who are in Susa, this is the capital, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And my attendants will also fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. She says, I'm going to go. I'm going to do what God's opened the door for me to do. I am here for such a time as this. Whatever the consequence is, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. Just a couple of, of reflections as you continue on through your week. Number one, there's people who speak words of wisdom to us. Mordecai spoke wisdom to Esther and got her thinking about, maybe God's put you there for a moment such as this. I encourage you to notice those people that God has put around you who know the word of God, who love Jesus, and who speak wisdom. Even when their wisdom sometimes stretches you like Mordecai's wisdom stretched Esther. Even what they say man, pushes you to really test your faith. Will you hear the wisdom of the people God's put around you? That, that's a great way to live your life, learning from the wisdom of others. Next, we recognize this that God is sovereign and working in a sovereign way beyond our understanding. So Mordecai says, perhaps, maybe it is, Esther, that God has put you here for this very moment, for this very reason. And you find out when you read the book of Esther that that's exactly why God put her there. And I want to say to you, maybe it is that God has put you where you are right now for a reason. I remember this woman, Grandma Lois, who was a part of our church in Michigan that I pastored for 14 years, one of the sweetest people I've ever known. She finally came to a point where her husband had passed away. She lived on a large farm by herself and she couldn't take care of the farm. And her kids came and they said, they said, mom, we need to put you in a place where you can get some care and some support and some help. She didn't want to leave her farm. She went to this kind of retirement community. It was a nice place, but it wasn't where she wanted to be. And I remember visiting her and she, and she, she tried to have a good spirit, but you could tell she was discouraged. And I, and I said, I said, grandma Lois, you are one of the most gracious, kind Christians I know. You greet everyone you know with kindness. I said, what if God's put you here to greet every person who's in this home, to share the love of Jesus with them? Could it be that God has put you here at this moment for this purpose? And she thought about it. And she said, yeah, that could be. She owned that. She took a hold of it. And she began to love the people in that, in that retirement community. And when she finally got to the point where she couldn't get up and get out of her bed anymore, they would come to her room to receive the blessing from this woman of God. 
Perhaps God's put you where you are for a reason bigger than you realize. And then finally, at the end of this uh, little passage, she says, I'm going to go do the right thing, and if I perish, I perish. She counts the cost. We need to do that every day. As Christians, we're called to every day deny ourselves, take up the cross, follow Jesus. If I perish, I perish. Whatever the cost is, it's worth it for Jesus. Whatever Jesus calls you to do, it's worth the cost. You'll be amazed at the good things he can do through you, but will you trust him enough to count the cost and follow Jesus? Lord Jesus, we pray as we walk through the rest of this week uh, that we would walk in the delight of your presence, that we would look at every situation we're in and say, perhaps, God, you've put me here for a reason bigger than I know, even when I'm in a place I don't want to be. Lord, we know that Esther was in a place she didn't want to be. She was in a foreign land as a prisoner of war, but you used her. Lord, I think of how Grandma Lois ended up in a place she didn't want to be, but that became a place of ministry and kingdom work. Lord, wherever we are, let us see your plan and follow it with passion, we pray in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you take time to register for worship. If you're going to be coming in the courtyard or if you're going to be coming in the parking lot to park and enjoy the service there. If you're going to be online, we'll see you. Remember, streaming services, they're all at the same time, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock. We'll see you Sunday.